Hey everybody, Greg Tech Gear Junkie here, and I just got a violation letter from the HOA. Actually, it's not that bad. Anytime one of us hams lives in an HOA gets a violation letter, we get uh, a little bit nervous, I'm sure. But this one, it's because I didn't trim a bush out there. So, <laughs> no worries about my antennas, thank goodness. And uh, I'll trim that bush, I'll be a good responsible citizen. Speaking of HOAs and antennas, I've got a new one I'm working on. It's called the Coat Hanger Antenna. Come follow me and I'll show you what. Here it is in all of its glory. I haven't deployed it yet. But I got the design from the book, the ARRL Small Antennas for Small Places book. Really excellent book. I'll leave a link in the description. And they give you plans for a doublet antenna that's fed with 300 ohm ladder line. I'm just regular antenna wire and some insulators there on the end. Uh, the center support is any kind of insulator you can find and I looked all over my house until I finally found this uh, unused coat hanger, hence the coat hanger antenna. So I've used some zip ties and did a little drilling to get the the wires routed good there. You can see there a pat pending, uh, Tech Gear Junkie patent number 12. I'm <laughs> just kidding. But uh, the good thing about a ladder line fed antenna is that your losses are going to be very low. So in this particular design, the length of the legs is not super important. The longer the better, but the impedance is going to be kind of all over the place. Uh, just depending on the length of the feed line and the length of the legs, I cut these legs to be about equal for 40 meters, so they're about 33 and a third feet long, but it doesn't really matter. I just had that extra wire laying around and a couple of spare insulators. So I'm going to raise this sucker up and we'll try it on a few bands and see how well it does. And later on, maybe I'll go inside and we'll do some whisper testing. Anyhow, join me, Greg Tech Gear Junkie, as we test out this coat hanger antenna and see how it does. I've got the KX2 here ready to go. Now it requires a balanced feeder. Because my KX2 has a built-in tuner, I can just connect it right here to my balanced connection. If you're just trying to feed it with a coax, you'd need a four to one balance. And I don't have one of those currently, so we'll see how well this works. Inside the house, I've got a heavy duty tuner with balanced input, so we can hook that up too. All right, well, we're all set up here now. You can see I've got the doublet stuck up there on a painter's pole, which I realize at the moment is not ideal because the painter's pole is made of aluminum. I don't have currently a home-based fiberglass mask to test it out on, but it's hanging far enough off of it that I'm not super concerned. Now, one of the things you're gonna see is that the ladder line here is hanging as straight down as possible. That's very important for a doublet because this little sucker is real sensitive. So you want to get it hanging as straight down as possible and away from your support lines. Away from anything really that's metallic. So I've got it coming straight down and headed over to the KX2 over there. And you can see the leg. Maybe you can see it. Maybe you can't. The leg of the dipole over here going toward that fence. And you can see my neighbor's solar installation. Hopefully they won't be too much of a pain in the neck for me with interference, but we'll see. All right, I've got the KX2 set up. You can see the feed line right here. And uh, try to make a contact to see how well it does on 20 meters.
I do this for you guys. <laughs> Almost 100 degrees in the shade. Hopefully somebody will come back to me. Well, I've been calling CQ for a while now. And as you can see on Ham Alert, I am getting out. Reverse beacon network. Nobody's just coming back to me, so fine. And <laughs> to heck with you guys. Actually, it's getting really hot, so I'm going to go inside and hook up to the big radio and try to do some whisper testing and maybe call CQ in there too where it's not 100 degrees. So let's relocate. Taking it up here. There, that looks pretty good. Okay, so here we are after two rounds of whisper testing on 20 meters. That's not too shabby, I'd say. Where that contact is, is hard to see from the map. Definitely Russia, I guess. Deep into Russia, I don't think I've ever gotten that far. Sideband or anything. Let's try a couple other bands. Okay, what you're seeing now is for 17 meters, which is pretty good. Looks over, like got over into the Canary Islands. The band is pretty dead. I didn't see any activity. I wasn't hearing anybody, but I know I'm getting out. So let's try 30 meters. See how that goes. Okay, here we go. This is 30 meters, which is pretty good. Uh, 30 meters is the for some reason, that's the hardest for me to get tuned up. You need to do it just exactly right, and the, the bandwidth is really narrow for each tune setting that I've picked. But hey, once you get it dialed in, it seems to work pretty good. All right, let's try 40 now. Okay, and here we go for 40 meters. A whisper, one watt, so that's not too shabby, considering it's still pretty much daytime outside. So I'll take that. Antenna seems to be working pretty darn good. So cool. Let's see if I can get a shot of the. These are the ballast connectors in the back of my tuner. So if you want to make an antenna like this, just check, make sure your tuner has a couple of connections like that one. And then on the front here, turn my light on. You can see I have the option to select that here. So that works pretty well. Okay, so we did the whisper testing and uh, did just fine on 17, 20, 40 meters. Uh, those are about the only bands that seem to be open right now. Otherwise I would have done, done 15 and 10 and all that stuff. But uh, heck, you know what? It seems to work pretty good. Now you may be thinking to yourself, oh wait a minute, Greg, how is this a stealthy HOA antenna? Well, in its current form, in its current form it isn't, <laughs> but the it mentions in the ARRL small antennas for small spaces section that you can set this up and then run it along the eaves of your house. So I'm testing it right now in kind of like ideal situations, but you could run them up and run the legs of the dipole around the eaves of your house bend them around as you need to given that the length is isn't as critical in a setup like this so here I could take it and bend it around and then run them down the eaves of my house that way so that might be a step for a future future setup right now I don't particularly need it it was more of an experiment than anything the tricky thing about this type of antenna is always going to be the feed line, which is also its best point and its biggest pain in the neck. It's a good because it's really low loss. As we've seen, I'm getting good, good whisper reports all around the country, even with low wattage. But the bad thing is it's very sensitive to its surroundings. And it's... I've kind of got it running in through my window temporarily here now. There's a cat in the window there. You can see her. <laughs> But it's not the easiest thing to ground. You can see my grounding rod is right here. <laughs> so to feed it through, I'd have to come up with a better way to ground it if I wanted to make it permanent. So anyway, all in good time. We'll get there. Anyhow, it's been a fun test. Thanks, everybody. This is Greg, Tech Gear Junkie. Uh, thanks for watching. Oh, and I did a, a failed activation yesterday of uh, 
Malpine and Monument National Park. I just couldn't get my antenna out because I missed a piece. But I'll, I'll attack some of that footage on the end of this if anybody's curious about watching that. Until next time, we'll catch you later. This is KG5OCW, Greg Tech Gear Junkie. CQ photo. This is Kilo Golf 5 Oscar Charlie Whiskey. Kilo Germany 5 Oscar Charlie Whiskey parks on the air. Kilo 9 Echo X ray Yankee, your 555555. QSB, QSB, can I get your, your QTH again? QSL, QSL, you came right up there. Uh, thanks for the contact at 73s.